Well guys, this is it, the new Mac mini, and it really is mini. I mean, look at this thing. It's not much bigger than an Apple TV. I mean, just think of where we started with those first computers that would fill up an entire room. And those computers were not as smart as your average calculator in 2024. And here we are now looking at this really powerful desktop computer that's capable of gaming, video editing, streaming, and even handling AI. And it literally fits in the palm of my hand. Let's ramble. So yeah, I gotta say this is truly impressive, but what is equally impressive is that Apple has kept the price really low at 599 bucks, and for students, it's even 100 bucks cheaper at 499. And for that, you get a pretty beefy base configuration that honestly will be plenty powerful for most people. I mean, if you're a student, this will 100% be more than enough for you, and it will definitely last you through college without question. This is the base model, which starts at 16 gigabytes, and I'm so happy that Apple finally decided to get rid of the eight gigabyte option. It's rocking a 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, and a 16 core neural engine. The base model comes with 256 gigs of storage up from 128 gigabytes and 256 is reasonable. You can definitely get by on it, especially if you supplement it with some external storage like a portable SSD. But if you plan on keeping these computers for the next years to come, I would say that you might wanna consider upgrading the storage, but that really is the only thing to consider. Everything else about this thing is absolutely fantastic for the average user. And to be honest, I think this might just be the best value for money Mac Apple has ever produced. I would even go so far as to say it's the best value computer on the market right now, full stop. Not just Mac, computer. That actually looks more like a miniature Mac Studio like it does one of the previous Mac Mini models. And the IO on this tiny computer is actually pretty good. On the front, we have two USB-C ports of up to 10 gigabits per second and a 3.5 millimeter jack for your headphones. I know people are kind of divided on this. The real Apple freaks that are all about aesthetics would have preferred all ports to be on the back for that ultra clean look. Others will love the convenience of having these ports available whenever they need them. Personally, I'm somewhere in the middle. I don't really like a lot of stuff dangling on the front of my machine, but I do intend to use the Thunderbolt dock anyway, so that's not really an issue for me. And to have these ports readily available on the front can be very convenient. Like if you quickly want to pair a mouse or a keyboard without having to fidget in the settings, or you want to give your phone a quick charge maybe, or maybe you want to import some files from another device really quick, that's when these ports come in really handy. Now this Mac mini does not come with peripherals, obviously, which is of course to be expected at that very reasonable price of 599 bucks. With that said, most of us will have a spare mouse or a keyboard laying around. And if you don't, and you want to keep things within the Apple ecosystem, this would be a great opportunity to invest in some of those new USB-C peripherals like the USB-C keyboard or the trackpad. But of course you can hook up pretty much any keyboard and mouse combo. It doesn't have to be all Apple stuff. But yeah, all in all, this is what the entire setup is gonna look like. And again, I'm kind of blown away by this. You can literally stick this entire desktop setup, and I repeat, desktop setup, into your backpack and take it with you on a trip. All you'd need is a monitor, and it has plenty of options for those. On the back, we have a power plug. We have the ethernet port, which comes as a gigabit ethernet port by default, but you can upgrade it to 10 gigabit ethernet if you plan to use it for like fast networking, or you're lucky enough to have a fast internet connection that can actually benefit from a 10 gigabit port like we do here in the studio. Belgium recently got 10 gigabit internet, which is absolutely insane. But so far, the only way I was able to take advantage of the full speed is by hooking up a Thunderbolt 2 10 gigabit ethernet port adapter to my M3 Max MacBook Pro, but that's an extra step I don't really wanna take, and the adapter runs really hot. So to have this port available right on the Mac is just super convenient and pretty awesome. Next to it, we have an HDMI port, which will work with most modern monitors or TVs. And then we have the three Thunderbolt 4 ports. Those deliver up to 40 gigabits per second in speed and come with display port capability, which means this tiny Mac can support up to three displays, two 6K displays and one 5K display all at 60 Hertz. And for my particular setup, that is actually perfect because I'm rocking two studio displays and this super tiny, and I'll say it again, $599 computer will be able to run this entire setup without breaking a sweat. 
Guys, that really is mind blowing. And of course, these Thunderbolt 4 ports aren't just there for displays. You can also hook up like super fast SSDs and transfer files back and forth. And that could be relevant because internal Apple storage, as we all know, is super expensive. So to be able to permanently hook up an external drive, I mean, you can literally just plug it in once and forget about it. That really is a very useful option to have. Now, the M4 Pro model comes with three Thunderbolt 5 ports instead of Thunderbolt 4 with even crazier speeds up to three times faster, which means 120 gigabits per second, which is absolutely insane. By the way, this is the absolute base model, but I also ordered the opposite of that, which is the M4 Pro Mac Mini completely spec'd out, which I believe might actually be powerful enough to replace my fully spec'd out M3 Max MacBook Pro that cost me at least twice as much as the M4 Pro Mac Mini. So I'm really looking forward to putting that machine to the test as well. And please guys do hit that subscribe button if you wanna tag along for those videos. It would really mean a lot to me to have you on board. Now for the massive elephant in the room, the already infamous power button, which Apple very inconveniently placed on the bottom of the device. Why they chose to do that, I don't know. Maybe there is a legitimate technical reason for it, or maybe this is all just a clever marketing scheme to get us to talk about this stuff on social media. Any publicity is good publicity, right? All right, so it's at the bottom. We can live with that. But why on earth is it at the backside of the bottom? I mean, not only do we have to physically lift the device to turn it on or off, you actually have to give it the good old reach around to make it purr. Anyway, kidding aside, it is what it is. And to be honest, I can't really remember the last time I actually had to fully shut down my Mac or do a hard reset. I never really turn my Mac off at all. That's just not how they're designed. I just put it to sleep whenever I leave my office. And normally I just use my keyboard, my mouse, or even my Apple watch to do that. So yeah, weird button placement for sure, but I don't really care. It really is nitpicking at this point because man, what a machine for that price. I really can't say that enough. Don't even sleep on it if you're in the market for a new computer, this is a super no brainer in my opinion. I can't wait to really put this thing to the test and do some follow up videos for you guys. And I'm really super excited for that M4 Pro model to arrive to see how hard we can push that thing. And I'm also working on a video about all kinds of different use cases for these Mac minis. Some of those might actually surprise you. So definitely tune back in for all that good stuff. If you enjoyed the video, please give one of these. Thank you so much for watching and see you guys soon.